Okay, so the window is now cleared, but we are getting tons of error messages. Basically, the validation layers complain that the layout of the image in the swap chain is incorrect for clearing. It needs to be layout present source, where in fact it is layout undefined. Now, I did mention the layout in a previous video, so let me just remind you that this term refers to the way that pixels are packed in memory. For example, an image may be structured like a two-dimensional array, where the rows of the image are simply sequential in memory. Another option is tile-based, where every logical tile in the image is actually a consecutive row of pixels in memory. This layout may be more optimized for tile-based GPUs. It is also possible that one layout will perform better in one stage of the pipeline, where in fact a different layout will be required for a different stage. We don't want to expose the actual physical layout of the image to the developer, because these things tend to change dramatically between GPUs, and new layouts may pop out as technology progresses. Therefore, we only refer to the layout by its name, and we have a list of layouts which are optimized for different stages of the pipeline. For example, optimized for image copy, aka transfer, optimized for presenting, and etc. As always with Vulkan, it is the responsibility of the application to transition the image to the correct layout. Before we dive into layout transitions, I'd like to say a big thank you to Velko, who recently joined the 3D Underground. If you too would like to support this channel, you can do that at patreon.com slash OGLDev, or by joining the YouTube channel as a member. Okay, so to transition the layout of the image, we use an image memory barrier. In general, a barrier is a synchronization mechanism. You can use it to make sure that the shadow map is entirely populated before the GPU starts reading from it in the lighting pass. In our simple example, we don't really need this kind of functionality. Instead, we will use the other capability of the barrier, which is to transition images from one layout to the other. There are two types of barriers in Vulkan. Execution barriers that control the order of command buffer execution, like the shadow map example, and memory barriers that synchronize the access to memory objects. Today we need a memory barrier. Okay, there are actually three types of memory barriers. Which one do you need? We have global memory barriers, which apply to all memory objects, buffer memory barriers, which only apply to buffers, such as the vertex and index buffers, and image memory barriers which only apply to images, for example, the swap chain images. Yep, the last one should do the trick. To specify the barrier, we need to understand a few terms. First, we have the source and destination stage masks. The source stage mask specifies the stage in the pipeline where the last write operation took place. This can be any one of the core pipeline stages that we are familiar with, like the vertex geometry or the fragment shaders. In addition, we can dive deeper into the pipeline using intermediate stages, like the vertex input, before the vertex shader, early and late fragment tests, and etc. Each stage is appropriate for a different use case of synchronization. The destination stage mask specifies the stage, which will read from the resource. The same stages are used here as well. These two stage masks help us set a read after write dependency. In the case of the clear command, we have to use the transfer stage for both the source and destination. This stage represents the part of the pipeline that handles buffer copy and buffer clearing. Next, we have the source and destination access masks. This mask type specifies the way that the resource will be accessed. For example, a resource may be the source of index or vertex data, the source of uniform or texture data, and etc. There are quite a few types of access masks here, and not all of them are relevant for swap chain images. In our case, we need just a couple of them. Memory read, which covers all read accesses, and transfer write, which covers write access to an image or buffer 
in a clear or copy operation. This was a very quick overview of barriers. As I said, we just need them for layout transition and we will take a closer look in the future when we actually use them to set up dependencies between command buffers. Okay, so we are in tutorial number 11 and all of the changes today are in the application side and specifically in the function that records command buffers right here because the barriers are part of how you set up the frame in terms of the commands that you submit and any synchronization that you want to put in. So we have the loop that goes over all the command buffers and right now we just begin the command buffer we put in the clear instruction and we end the command buffer. And now you can see that I've added two calls to CMD pipeline barrier before the clear and after the clear. So this guy needs to transition the layout to the one which is appropriate for clearing. And then after the clear, we need to transition the layout to be appropriate for presenting. The first parameter in this function is of course the current command buffer. So as usual, because we are iterating over all the command buffers, this entire sequence of functions is specific to the current command buffer. Now earlier we talked about the stage mask that tells us where in the pipeline the resource was last written and then read, and the access mask that specifies the specific type of access. So the two stage masks go into this function, the pipeline barrier, and the access mask goes here into the barrier itself. We're going to see that in a second. Since this is a very simple program and all we are doing is to clear the window, both of the source and the destination stage mask, in this case, are stage transfer, as you can see here. Okay, this is the source and this is the destination. So these are the stage masks for the barrier that comes before the clear. And for the barrier that comes after the clear, we set the source stage mask to be again stage transfer, because this is where we're coming from. But the destination is the bottom of the pipeline, because the presentation engine, which is going to read from the image, is considered to be something which is after the pipeline. And this is what this bit represents, okay? We have the top of the pipeline before everything starts running, before the vertex sheet or everything, and then we have the bottom of the pipeline after the fragment shader and the compute transfer, everything. The next parameter is a dependency flag, but we don't really need this right now, so we just put in zero. And then we have all the barriers. Okay, so this function is capable of submitting multiple barriers from all the three categories. Okay, we have the memory, buffer, and image. So for each type of barrier, we have the number of barriers and the pointer to an array of the corresponding structure. So in this case, we don't need these two. So we just put in zero for the number of elements and null for the address. And we have a single image memory barrier. So we have one as the number of elements and the address of the barrier, which we're going to see in a second. And as I said, we have two barriers, okay? We have present to clear barrier and then clear to present barrier. Okay, so this is the previous present to the current clear and then clear to the next present. So we have the two barriers up here. And the reason why these two structures are inside the loop is only because we need to set the appropriate image for the current command buffer. So if you want to do a bit of cleanup and reduce the size of the loop, you can actually define the two barriers before the loop and then just set the current image as we do here. And the reason why we're using the barriers is of course to transition the layout, okay? So we have the old layout and the new layout in this image memory barrier structure. Let me explain something about the old and the new layouts. The old layout has to satisfy one of the following conditions. It can be undefined, or it can match the current layout of the image. This is important with regard to the contents of the image. If the old layout is undefined, the system may discard the contents of the image. If the old layout matches the current layout, then the contents are preserved. 
In case you want to keep the contents of the image, make sure you know the current layout. So the old layout is undefined because we don't care about the contents. And then the new layout is transfer destination optimal. Okay, so this one matches the layout which the clear command expects, right? We have transfer destination optimal here. And then this is the new layout for the present to clear barrier. For the second barrier, the old layout is now transfer destination optimal. And then the new one is of course, present source. So this one is appropriate for presenting. Next, we have the source and destination access masks that tells us how the resource was last written to and how it will be read. So for the first barrier, the source is memory read, and then the destination is transfer write. Now in the case of the clear command, the destination access mask is kind of like more important because it represents what we are actually doing here, right? The stage for clearing is transfer and the type of access is transfer write. For the source, you can use memory read or even access none. Both of them will work in this case. Other than that, we have the source and destination Q family index. And this is important when you want to transition the ownership of the image between queues of different families. And in this case, you need to put in the correct values. But when you don't care about that, you can use family ignored. And notice that this is not zero. So make sure you use this macro. Next, we have the image and the sub resource range, which specifies the MIP levels and the array layers. And we saw that previously, we have this already here. This is the same structure which is used for the clear, right? We have it right here. Now for the second barrier, clear to present, the source is now transfer write, because this is where we were. And then the destination is memory read. And now if we run this, we can see that the window is cleared and the terminal window is quiet, we're not getting any error messages this time. And that is it for today. In the next video, something really, really bad is going to happen to those poor barriers. But, um, no, sorry, um, I can't tell you. You'll have to see for yourself. <laughs>